This is Navin Reddy. In this video, we'll talk about JMS. So the purpose of learning JMS is to understand how EGB, in which you have message-driven beans, work. So when we talk about message-driven beans, they are responsible to send a messages from one bean to other bean, and it is achieved with the help of JMS. So JMS stands for Java Messaging Services. Now if we talk about JMS, so it allows the component to post messages for other components. Asynchronous other than synchronous is because we have to focus more on asynchronous is because we don't know when the message will arrive. And it uses, uh, it, it is also known as something called as MOM. Now MOM stands for it is Message Oriented Middleware. It comes under, uh, it, it has two basic models. One is point to point and second is publish publish and subscribe. So point to point is more like peer to peer network or peer to peer uh, communication. And publish subscribe is like when you, uh, like a newspaper. So when you send, when you, uh, like Times of India, they publish a paper and then we have thousands of, or billions, I, I, I can say millions of subscriber who read those articles. So when you talk about point to point, it's like one to one and uh, publish subscribe is like one to many. What does JMS do? So it has some basic functionality. So it's like a, J a Java API, which is used to create, send, and receive messages, or you can read, read messages. So in any way, if in your, system, in your mind, if you are imagining this as an email, so let me tell you, it's not an email. It's like a new system, okay? So it's like you can create, you can send, you can receive messages, and you can even read messages. Now it has two models, first is point to point. So when you talk about point to point, let's imagine you have two clients, one is client one and client two. So client one want, wants to send a message and this message will be consumed by client two. So in order to send all these messages, you require something called as queue here. So this queue will collect all your messages and it will give to this client two. So basically here, a queue will not send a message. It's client two who will consume the message. It's like more like a pull type of uh, messages. So Q here will not push. It will, this client two will pull. And so in point to point, we use something called as Q. So point to be remember, in point to point, we use Q. In publish subscribe, we have one sender and multiple receivers. It's like one to many relationship. So client one will publish. Uh, a concept of sending and publish is almost same. The only difference is in point to point we have queue and in publish subscribe we have this topic. So in this also what you do is you subscribe. So initially you have to subscribe so that you can, you will receive those messages. So if you want to go for one to one, you will use a queue. If you want to use one to many, you will go for topic. Now, again, we can achieve two things. We can achieve synchronous or we can achieve asynchronous. In synchronous, we have to use a receive method. In asynchronous, we have to use an interface called as message listener. So if you are familiar with AWT and Swing in Java, so you might be knowing something called as event listeners. So it's not an event listener, it's a message listener here. So it will act or it will receive a message when you listen for a message. So in order to implement a programming model of this JMS, the, the, these are the things you, need, you require. So what you need here, first you need a connection factory. So once you got the object of connection factory, you will get a object of connection. Now once you got the object of connection, you can create object of a session. Now once you got the session, then you can create a message producer and a message consumer. So this message producer is responsible to create the messages and this consumer is responsible to receive the messages. So when you write a code of JMS, you have to concentrate all, on all those things. In fact, in the subsequent tutorials, I will be writing some codes for this. So for that codes, I want you to remember all this, uh, all these steps. So that is from the theory of JMS. So now you know what is message driven beans, you know what is JMS. Let's try to create an application in which we'll, uh, we'll demonstrate this.